Here's an interesting situation that popped up recently from a Quizmaker user. She had some audio and some other content on a blank slide in Quizmaker, and she wanted to know if there's a way to require the learner to listen to all of that audio before they moved on and answered some questions about what they heard. Well, at first it might seem like you can't do that because in Quizmaker, when you publish, there will always be a button right down here in the lower right of the player. It'll say submit or next or whatever you choose to call it. And it's always active, right? It's not like you can disable it until the slide finishes playing out. The learner can click that button anytime. So if they're looking at a blank slide where there is no question that they need to answer, they could easily jump right past that blank slide to you know whatever comes next, the quiz questions or whatever other content you have. But here's one way that you could require the learner to stay on your slide until the audio is done. Rather than use a blank slide, you could actually use a question slide. And here's an example of that. The slide that we're looking at now is actually not a blank slide. It's a question slide. It's called a pick one question, which is a survey question, meaning that it's not graded. There's no score associated with it. And what we've done is use it just kind of as a gatekeeper, basically as a way for the learner to acknowledge that they've listened to the audio. And these elements right here are covering up the question at the moment. And what we've done is cause these items to disappear when the audio is done. And it's easier to see if we open up the timeline here. Let me just open this up and we'll scroll down a little bit. See how my audio is right here and it's ending or fading out at about the seven and a half second mark. And everything else that you see above that is the stuff that's concealing my question. So here's my pick one question on the timeline. All these other items above it are the things that are covering it up. So I've got these little ovals that kind of animate in to make it look like the audio is playing. Here's a text box. Um, here's a little speaker icon. So all those things are covering up my question until I'm ready for the learner to see it. And you can see right here that they all end at about seven and a half seconds. This one's a little bit longer, but that was very intentional because that's at the same time that my audio ends and you can cause any element to disappear from your slide whenever you want. So all I've done here is selected each item and then I've just dragged the end point to wherever I wanted it to disappear. In this case, it's about seven and a half seconds. And if you want to, you can also add some animation to that end point so that the disappearance isn't quite so abrupt. So if you come up here to the animations tab, you can see I've applied a fade out animation to all of those items that I've caused you know, to, to exit my slide. And then the only thing left for the whole duration of the slide are these two items right down here. My background graphic and my pick one question is the only thing left on the slide once the audio is finished. So let's go ahead and take a look at this so you can see how this behaves. We'll preview the whole quiz here. So what we'll see is the audio comes on um, with the slide. It plays for seven and a half seconds. You can see these things are just animating in to kind of show the learner it's playing. And then at seven and a half seconds, those things disappear. And there's our little acknowledgement question that says, yes, I'm done listening to the audio. And the learner could select that and then move on. So what happens if they try to you know, select it before this question is revealed? If they hit submit before answering the question, then they get a pop up and you can you know, customize the text of this to say something else. But it just says, you know, you have to complete the question before you submit. So once they do acknowledge that they've listened to the audio and they hit submit, then they can answer their question and then move on. And this one only had one question in the sample. So you can see how you can use this sort of thing as kind of a gatekeeper. So I wanted to just show you also behind the scenes a little bit so that you know how to set one of these up yourself if you'd like to try it. If you wanna insert a pick one question, it's a survey question. So you click survey question and then choose pick one and in the preview area here, you can see it looks just like a multiple choice question. The only, only difference really is that it's not scored. And you only really need one option, right? So if we open up the one that I created, you can see in form view here, there's really only one choice because we only need one you know, option for the learner to acknowledge that they listened to the audio. The other important thing here is that we've used this drop down right here on the toolbar to say that this question is required. The user must answer the question before they can move on to the next part of the quiz. That way, if they do try to hit submit or next before that audio is finished or before they answer their acknowledgement question, they'll get that little message that says they can't do that. They have to you know, answer the question before they move on. So hopefully this gives you a way to manage those situations when you need to require the learner to listen to all of the audio on your slide before they move on.